So we're gonna be potting up some plants, but first I have to paint these. So I've got this little one down here, this little terracotta. Okay, so we're gonna be painting this one and this one. Oh, this is the denium. I didn't show you guys. Um, I totally forgot to film when I was at Lowe's, but I got that one at Lowe's. Really good price on that. Nice size. Yeah, if you ever see a deniums, I mean, they get really, really expensive. So that is like literally dirt cheap. Look at that. It cracked its pot right open. Take these pots out, clean them up, and I've got a couple more out there too. Okay, I'm gonna start with the Thompson's water seal and just spray that all on the inside. Because these are terracotta and they're porous, it just helps protect your paint job because when you're watering the plants, you know, the water can kind of seep through and it can affect your paint job over time. So it just helps extend the life of your paint job. All right, you gotta have your, what is this? Stormtrooper mask on. <laughs> Should take about 15 minutes for that to dry and then we will get to priming and painting and i'll just zip through this part because i've i've already shown this so many times on my channel every time i'm painting terracotta i do the same step so you guys have probably already seen this so we'll zip through that part all right guys we're gonna go out and do a little painting well the pots are done because we did that yesterday oh sorry got super bright um yeah, the pots. Ooh, it's nice out here. It's, it's hot. Probably like 85 right now. It's gotta be maybe getting. Actually, oh no, it feels like it's like 90 degrees out here. I like it. 90 degrees, probably 10% humidity. Feels good. Okay, so here's the pots. Those are all dry. I left them out overnight to dry. And the only thing I'm gonna paint this morning is this is that plant stand that I got at an estate sale for like two bucks. Figured I would just go ahead and paint it white. I, tried, I painted it gray first because I thought I was gonna do like a gray, gray pot with it, but then I was kind of doing more white stuff. Okay, so let's get started potting this adenium up. And normally with the drainage holes, I will take a piece of window screen. So you can buy window screen at, uh, you know, any any Home Depot, Lowe's, any home improvement store will sell it in rolls and you can just cut it super easy with you know just a regular pair of scissors. Just cut that out and you can lay a little piece in the bottom to cover up the drainage hole if you have pots that have large drainage holes. If you don't have window screen you can use a coffee filter or you could even use a paper towel just fold that up. Just something to place in the bottom of your pot before the soil goes in to help keep the soil in your pot and from not trying to escape through the drainage hole. And the soil that I'm using is Tanks Cactus Pro or Cactus Pro is it? Tanks Pro Cactus and Succulent Mix. It's a mix of pumice, coconut coir, it's mostly coconut coir, um, the pumice to kind of, you know, keep it really aerated, and then also uh, organic compost. So it's a really nice light mix, super fast draining, perfect for your cactus, succulents, citrus, um, anything that needs, you know, a very, a very uh, lightweight soil. So, and if you can see it there, it's just really, really coconutty. So all that coconut husk in there. I also use this for some of my house plants, like the euphorbias. They do really well in this. So you can also use this for your palms. The palms really like it. So I'm going to be using coconut coir when we do the planting, uh, planting of the medjool date palms, the date pits. So for that, I have a super fine mix though. So I won't be using this. It'll be just pure coconut coir, which is good for the seedlings to be able to sprout up really easily. It's not, it's not overly aerated because then uh, if you use overly aerated with the seedlings, there's not enough kind of close, it, don't, it won't have enough moisture around it. So I like to have low pots when growing um, fat codex plants like the adenium because I want it to spread out wide. I want that codex to grow, you know, short and wide instead of deep. You know what I mean? So that is why we're going to try to keep it in this shallow profile pot. I haven't got my gardening set up quite ready yet for you guys, but I've just got like two saw horses right now and a piece of plywood going across as my table. But sometime I'm gonna get a better setup so I can film easier with you guys. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and unpot this now. I'm just gonna work off that soil that's around it right now. It's pretty, it's pretty hard. It feels like maybe it was planted in some sort of peat, which peat isn't good it's not good for plants because when it um, when it hardens up, it's really hard to get the water to penetrate back into the soil to get to the roots. It just sort of ends up in this hard, 
hard crusty ball and you'll know it when you've got a soil with peat in it because it pulls away from the sides of the pot. Yeah, the coconut coir is just so much more gentle on the plant roots, allowing the, the water to penetrate back into that soil again after it's been dried out. So we're just gently freeing up those roots. And you might have a little bit of root breakage, that's fine. We're not gonna be watering it right away. Um, that's why we don't water the succulents right away, succulents or cactus, right after you pot it up because you want any of those broken roots to have time to basically scab over. Like if you had a cut, um, you you wanna let that kind of dry out before you've got water and you know any bacteria from soil and stuff. You don't want bacteria getting into those cuts, which is why we wait to water and just let it dry out for about um, at least a few days, but usually I go for about a week after repotting, just to make sure those roots have fully kind of healed and closed up. But yeah, deniums are my favorite plants to grow just because they're so unique and boy, there's some, there's some really nice ones out at the nurseries around here in Tucson. Like huge, huge. They're not for sale or anything, but they are massive and they, they grow them like what they would look like in the wild in Madagascar and they're so cool because the, the trunks on them just get huge and they're all, you know, kind of like roping around each other. They're just super neat. Okay, there's our baby. Look at that, got some sweet potato action going on there. This, okay, this is definitely the most shallow pot that we can get away with using. When it was in that other pot, it was, the most of the codex was under the soil. But you don't want that, you want the codex. Like that's the part, that's the beauty of it, aside from, you know, the flowers, but that's the really cool part that you want to see is that trunk above the soil. Okay, yeah, this pot is going to be just fine for it. So we've got enough of the roots covered and enough of the codex will still be exposed. And I'll just go ahead and pack it down. And what's nice about the coconut coir soil is that you can pack it. You can press firmer when you're potting up, which normally most other soils, you, you only want to have a light pressure when you're packing the soil after you get a plant potted up because uh, otherwise it'll compress the soil too much and it needs to be able to be aerated, right? But because this is already so aerated, you can get a nice pack down and it's not going to damage the roots or anything. The top dressing you can really get creative with because you're sort of matching the plant and the pot, sort of creating a whole look to kind of pull it all together. And depending on what style you like, you can use like smooth river rocks, like smooth river rock pebbles. You can do a variety of different sizes. You could create different designs with multiple colors. Um, and where to get top dressing, you can go out like you like I could go out to the desert and go scrape some rocks or granite up in the, the hills here, which I've done that before. I just collected some granite, um, like decomposed granite chips, and they're really light colored, like almost a white. Um, I've got like the, I've got some granite chips that I did on some indoor house plants that I have already, the Dracaenas. Um, or you could use rock chips from a nursery because different nurseries will sell bags of rock chips. So I got this bag here of just, they're just um, natural, like a variety of natural colored rock chips for four bucks. And if you have indoor plants, you could also add, you know, different other cool things like maybe a crystal or something else in there. So yeah, the top dressing is just where you can get really creative and just create a cool look, you know, whether it's gonna match your decor or whatever sort of look you want. Should I bring you guys a little bit closer? Here, I'll bring you in just to change up the camera view for a minute. So I'm gonna do these small natural rock chips and then also a couple other size rocks in here. So yeah, just leave a bare spot with your soil exposed and set your accent rock or your larger stone directly over that spot. So that way you just have a spot where you can poke your finger directly in to check the moisture level of your soil in that first top inch. Usually if that top inch is dry, that's when you can go ahead and water. So it just allows you a spot that's direct access to your soil even if you have top dressing all the way around. So anyway, that one is all done, our adinium. Okay, so there's the Choya skeleton pieces that I got at the state sale. Um, I just popped the wax out of this one. There's a tag three for six bucks. And um, let's see, that one is almost done. So all I did was take this bamboo stick and poke it through the holes and the wax pops right up. Um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with those exactly. I just kind of collect uh, choya skeleton, like anything. So I've got a whole bunch of all, like all kinds of pieces. Like these, um, these here, the rain sticks. I love these things. So let's see, I think I will put these up here for now. 
unless I figure out another place I might want to use it. So, yeah, I'm not sure what I'll do with those, but I will put our sage in there maybe for now. I'll just put the copal in here too for now. Sometime after I get my shelves organized and, you know, get everything cleaned up and stuff, I'll do like a living room tour and I guess maybe front room tour, maybe living room and dining room. I'm just going to go through and share because I know I haven't shared a, a whole lot about the house yet, um, but I actually really love this house a lot. The only thing that, you know, I would change in here, well, I'd change a lot of stuff, but the floors would be like the first thing I would change because I'm not a fan of the flooring, you know, especially with the dark grout and they didn't seal the grout. But aside from the flooring, I love this house. This is, I mean, we've got a nice mountain view. Good morning, guys. It's Saturday morning, and we're going to an estate sale. It's a big one. Gonna be a busy I got one. here this morning. I thought, I was hoping I'd get here early because there's this thing that I really, really want. It's a nature. I don't want anyone else to hear you. Hear what you're after. <laughs> Otherwise, it might go after it, you know. So, anyway. I wanted to get here really early. I tried, I got here at 6 a.m. But there was already, and you get your ticket um, to be able to get in, it's all in order. There was already like 48 other people ahead. <laughs> so at six in the morning, that's when they first start handing out the tickets. Gotta be so, 300 here now. I know. How, how's this? Uh... Anyway, so here we are. It opens at 7. Okay guys, here's a picture. Milky Way. Got it. It's hanging right on that wall there. Look at everyone. They're all after records. There's tons of books and records in here. That's the only thing I'm after though. Boy, yeah, now look at the line of cars. Show it. Got it. Good thing. It's on metal too. Just behind you, somebody grabbed it? Yeah, well, just behind me, he was like, oh, you found it. Like, I had barely got it off the wall. Gotta be quick. I can't believe how many people are into the records. I mean... I know. Every time I go to a record store, there's like two people in it, and one of them is the employee. Yeah, well, they had a ton of them. Yeah, that was the biggest collection I've seen so far. Okay, there it is. I gotta clean it. Wow, look at that. I was just uh, realizing that with, it's going to look really nice with amethyst crystals. Oh, yeah, yeah right. Pull the color out nicely. My favorite part, too, is I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's a uh, streak of like a... Uh, oh, the shooting right here, star. Yeah, shooting yeah. star right there. All right, guys, we just got home from the store. We went to Sprouts and got some produce. Uh, Michael's, are you, are you starting your tofu scramble uh, right now? Yeah, I'm going to prep it. We'll do a little haul here of what we got. So we got some avocados. I think I've got a couple that are ripe and ready to use. You're going to use one on your, uh, yeah. on your scramble? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So those two are the riper ones. The scramble, to go. not cubed. Yeah. I got some ruby red grapefruit, orange, um, pink lady apples, these are some of my favorites. And then nectarines, cherries, a package of strawberries, and then for a stir fry. And I think um, we might do some stuffed mushrooms too. And then baby bok choy, um, zucchini. Oh, I'm gonna have some mint water too right now. So I just like to infuse water with mint leaves. So I got some broccoli. I love using broccoli in stir fry. It's so good and in salads. And that's one of my favorite vegetables. And then also um, cilantro, uh, cucumber, and then uh, another container of mint because I'm almost out. I got super greens for making salad and then green onions and asparagus. Oh, and we've got some ginger. I'll put that in the stir fry too tonight. And um, these little potatoes here, these purple potatoes. Oh, those are really good. And I've got a couple of purple, um, these are the Stokes purple potatoes. I'm gonna use those in uh, my sushi. And, um, oh, yes, you might be seeing some vodka back there, hit the Everclear. <laughs> that is not for uh, consumption, that's for my uh, hand sanitizer I'm going to be doing. And then I've got the aloe vera too, pure aloe vera. And that's also for my hand sanitizer. Okay, and I think that's it. Our handle is missing here, by the way, so it pulled out, so we got to put that back in. Oh, and I got mung bean sprouts. We're going to use that in stir fry. <laughs> you guys, I got Aretha's poem. 
They got it for a good, good price at Lou's. You're right, I can't see, so I need yeah, I know. To well, I'll, I'll try to tell you what's going on on this side as yeah. far as traffic goes. <laughs> You're my eyes. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Anything over there? Nope, you're clear. All right. Hey guys, we just wanted to stop home and drop off the Rafus palm and I'll put the name of this plant in the down bar in case any of you guys are looking for it. They're kind of hard to find because they tend to be a little more expensive, so not a lot of garden centers have them all the time. Um, but anyway, I, I specifically asked the guy at Lowe's if he was gonna be carrying them, so he ordered um, three of them in. Uh, so that's why I was able to the, you know, track it down. But anyway, I first found out about the Rafus Palm when we were staying in Sedona at the Airbnb. That house had, um, I wish I would have remembered to film in there, but they had tons of plants all over the house. So if I stay there again, I'll make sure I film next time. But yeah, they had tons of house plants and one of them was the Rafus Palm. So I was talking to the owner about, you know, all of our plants and this one really caught my attention and I thought it was super cool. And so I wanted to track one down so I could get one in our house. Um, so yeah, hers was about the same size and it was 25 years old. I don't know how old this one is, but um, yeah, they're really slow growing and they make really good house plants because they're super easy to care for. I don't know if you're able to see the stalks on there, but it's almost like, um, kind of like, you know, fibrous, like coconut husks. But I just really thought it was uh, a very cool looking plant. So that is it. And I just have it in this Ikea uh, pot that I got a while back. I've had that sitting empty, so now it's got something to live in it. Okay, and that noise is my AC that just popped on. So perfect timing, we're gonna head out. I'll take you guys with us. First stop is Costco. We're at Costco and we got some golden kiwis, natural delight coconut, date rolls, sugar snap peas. Michael got some vegan burgers. I haven't seen that at Costco, so thought we'd try them out or he'll try them out. If yeah. They're not gluten free, so. And walnuts, these are for a different uh, recipe, similar to a. Uh, and we got all milk. milk. Yeah. Okay, guys, we're on our way to Whole Foods. Michael's gonna get a donut. Yes. So just one then. Is that all you're getting? Just no. One? They look good. Right. Look, they have the most popular ones. What was this other one? Vanilla? Oh. Vanilla, vegan donuts, maple. chocolate, maple. Yeah, let's see if we got Post office just left. They just dropped off my package. You know what? Let's open this up over here. Um, I'm cleaning right now, so that's what all that stuff is doing on the floor there. Okay, so this is a floor lamp that I got on Bright Tech. This is called the Spark Arc. I'm just gonna lean it right here for now. Grab my scissors. I'm filling some orders right now too on the website. Okay, so I'm really hoping that this is gonna turn out exactly how it looks on the website because I love the look of it. I hope it's as big as it looks. So let's see. Yeah, okay, come down here with me. Okay, so this is the base. And I got it in silver. It comes in silver and black. Okay, so the base is nice and heavy. It's very sleek. So that's the whole idea of this light was I've been looking for one that looks kind of you know, like ultra modern, space age. I was just trying to figure out where to put the lamp. I thought I might put it in the bedroom, but actually I'm gonna put it in my other room. Um, let me get some stuff situated and I'll um, I'll show you the setup in just a little bit after I get it figured out, guys. So I'm gonna take you out with me while I'm running some errands. Um, so, okay, let's go ahead and head out. There's also this estate sale shop I wanna go to. Hold on, I almost forgot my water. Okay, let's head out. Okay, guys, I'm at the estate sale shop. I was looking at these online. They just got them in, but I don't know, in their pictures they looked whiter. So they're more of a cream color. Well, they even, they even look white on camera, but they're they're cream colored in, in person. I need some storage in the closet space, but... Mm, 
Maybe they'll uh, drop down in price. They're $44 each. So, I don't know. I'll think about it. Maybe I'll get that. I've been looking for a tissue box holder. Look at this. Clear acrylic. Three bucks. Comes with a tissue. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Wastebasket. All right, guys, I got my acrylic stuff. I got the, uh, well, I'll show you uh, when I get home. Get put away in here. Hey guys, it's Sunday. Um, I didn't end up filming yesterday afternoon, but I still have to clean the containers that I got yesterday, so, or containers. Well, two trash cans, so just little waste paper baskets. So those two, and then this is a magazine holder. Um, and then uh, the Kleenex holder, right. Yep, that one there. And I picked up a couple pieces of furniture that I've been on on an online auction. It's a, a side table, which I was gonna be using as a nightstand, and uh, I'll show you when I get out there because they're still in the truck right now, so I haven't brought them in yet. But I, I totally planned to film when I was out picking them up, but then, you know, when you're like in the moment and, you know, they're moving stuff out and everyone's grabbing furniture and stuff, it's kind of crazy. So anyway, um, I've got a chair or two, which I think well, I'm not sure where I'm gonna put it. It could go in three different rooms, so I'm not sure. I might just start with putting it in the living room like out here and just see how it is. Okay, so here they are. You know they're gonna be white, right? So as soon as I saw them online, I was like, oh yeah, this is a uh, Italian design. I love it. And then this is the nightstand. It's got three different pieces in here. And I'll tell you what, when I was driving, I took the wrong route coming home with these because even though I have them like tied you know tied down here so they won't like slide back um this i forgot that this piece here there's a center piece that opens up and it's swung out and river road is like a really curvy road and people kind of go you know kind of fast on it and everyone was like racing to work and i was like uh shoot and it swung out and it just barely missed this like look at that there's literally like millimeters between that sliding out i was so lucky that I didn't bang on that because that totally would have dinged it Ah, shoot, learned my lesson there, but oh, I'm so glad that it was okay. So today is already a good day. Okay, let me untie this. Hold on, I'll set you guys down. Um, when I went to pick it up, uh, the guys, there's like guys there that help you load it in, you know, into your vehicle. Um, so the guys helped me load it in there, so I didn't know exactly how heavy it was going to be, but wow, yeah, that's definitely a solid piece there. Um, anyway, so let's see. I don't know if I'm gonna keep it in the living room or if I was gonna have like a little, you know, have it as an accent chair in um, like the corner of the bedroom or my back office there. Um, you know, it's kind of one of those accent pieces that can, you know, fit anywhere. Oh, uh, that magazine holder there, that acrylic, that's the one that I got at the girls' estate sale. Um, and then the two waste paper baskets, um, I clean everything and those are in the two bathrooms. Um, so that I just had sitting there temporarily. Um, so yeah, I will get that situated, get it cleaned up. It's actually in super good condition, um, you know, like no no noticeable marks or anything on it, but I'm, I'm still gonna like clean it and wipe it down and everything and take off the stickers. Okay, clean the chair. I still have to go in and clean the nightstand, but I was just noticing my plant is really, um, this is a the Dracaena. It's really weighed down on this side, so you can see how it's braided down there. It's time for me to do another twist on it, so I'm just gonna kind of, um, let's see, I'll get in here and I'll snip this old one. That was already on there, that tie when I first got this and I got this at an estate sale. I gotta go get the scissors and snip that off and see how I wanna twist that to get those to hold up because it's been growing quite a lot lately. So I was just looking at this, what is this, a four by six? Something like that, I'm pretty sure. And so it's just like stained up. It looks like maybe people had candles up there before or something. So I thought maybe I would clean that up and paint it. Um, I'm pretty sure that they wouldn't mind me doing that. So I gotta go out and get some sandpaper to sand the mantle before we paint it today. And then um, I've got some other errands too. I gotta get uh, mint. I've got, a, I've got a whole list here of stuff we gotta get. I stopped filming yesterday because I was cleaning pretty much all evening. And so I thought, you know, it's, uh, I mean, I could do a cleaning video, but it was getting a little bit dark. So yeah, maybe I'll do like a cleaning routine or speed cleaning and stuff like that. That's, I don't know. I always think that stuff is fun. Is that, oh, hold on. Michael just texted. We keep sending um, lizard pictures back and forth. Like he sends 
California lizards and I send all the lizards in our yard. I got that yesterday too, I forgot to show you guys, but I liked it because it was kind of like, uh, reminded me of a chemistry beaker and I just thought it was a cool, cool shape for a vase. So I'm gonna be rooting plants in here. So, you know, you'll be able to see the, the roots growing. So that's gonna be another project that we'll do sometime soon here. Um, I just wanna find the right, uh, the right plant to grow in there. We're gonna be painting the mantle right now. I've got my paint ready, um, my drop cloth is down, and I cleared everything off the mantle. The first thing that I have to do is sand it. I'm sanding with a 120 sander block right now, just because, you know, it is totally raw and, um, you know, I've got a, oh geez, there's a, shoot, there's a, like a nail poked in there. there. Oh, there's one on this side too. Maybe the light's hanging up here or something. Ah, okay, I'm gonna have to get my hammer and pull that out. Um, okay, so yeah, just sanding that. And then I've got another block, a little bit finer. This is a 220. Um, something I realized, uh, I did not actually get a primer, but that's okay, I think. We'll do one coat, see how that works, um, yeah. So normally I, I use a primer with almost everything, but I didn't think about that yesterday when I was at the store. So, I got this at, uh, this is the Bear Ultra White. I got it at uh, Home Depot yesterday. I'm gonna use the lid too as my kind of just spritter there. Okay, so we'll let this finish drying and I'll be back in a little bit, do the third coat and then I'll pull back and we can compare the difference. All right guys, so here's the before and here's the after. And that's with three coats. Hey guys, I just got home. I got a desk on um, Craigslist this morning. Okay, I'm gonna untie this, but I'll show you what it looks like when we get inside. All right guys, there's the desk and it's the same one that I had when I was in Maui too. So I thought that was funny that I found the same exact one, but for half the price on Craigslist. So I was stoked about that. And oh, that's the chair uh, that I got the, at the estate sale. I got plenty of seating out there in the living room. So I decided to make this my, uh, my office chair for now. It does have a drawer too, I forgot to show you that. Um, now I've just got to determine if I want to have makeup in that drawer or if I want office stuff in there. So. Mm, I don't know, it could go either way because I do both at my desk here, so we'll, we'll see which one makes it in the drawer. Yeah, I've got to work on cleaning this room. I've got to clean my shelf too, and I've got some crystals to organize up there. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to show you that. Latest Craigslist find along with the online auction chair. My bike arrived. What color did you get? I think it comes, I, well, I wanted white. I think it comes in black and white though on the website. Oh, okay, that's the desk. Yeah. yeah, that would be nice to not be stagnant. These are for the pedals. Yeah, so if you want to pedal barefoot. There. Oh, and the peppered shoulders right there. Okay, so this is what it is, guys. One minute assembly, part exercise bike, part standing desk, easy rolling casters, and on-demand height adjustable uh, chair. I covered it. Uh, one shifts it up yeah, and down. Yeah, the right-handed one is up and down, and the left one is forward and back. For the... Okay, left, forward, and back, right, up, and down. Okay. There's a lever on the seat. Okay. On the side. How does that feel on bare feet? You want the rubber gaskets on there? Oh yeah, you would definitely have to. Yeah, well you. You definitely Those want the if you're pedaling barefoot. Should just slip right on there. 
Yeah, I think that's a problem with uh, people that work in offices, right? Yeah. Sit so long. It's bad for your circulation. Everything. Here. Right? Yeah. Back. Oh my gosh, it's super smooth. Yes, yeah, a storage to keep it so it doesn't get lost. Yeah. But then when you actually are using it, have Better. it up here. Yeah. All right. It's nice that it has wheels because you can wheel it anywhere. Yeah. Oh, you can vanity check in the mirror too. Okay, my desk bike, I'm probably gonna be keeping in this room most of the time, but it does have wheels, so I can always roll it out to the front room. Um, in, our, in the front part of the house, we have uh, bigger windows and nice view of the Catalina Mountains, and it's really pretty in the morning, so I love sitting out there um, and having my tea or whatever, so I can always roll it out there and be pedaling away, having my tea or my latte, and be editing videos. Uh, especially if you're, you know, you're at a computer and you're having to work for a long period of time, um, just sitting still like that, you know, your circulation starts to stagnate. And also when you're trying to tone and sculpt your lower body, sitting for long periods of time, it does, it does you in, let me tell you. It, it takes away all your hard work so fast. So this is gonna be a lot of fun to try that out and kind of experiment with another way to have your work set up. Okay, so there's my spark floor lamp. Oh my gosh, I love it. I think that's so cool. And one of you guys had asked me on, um, on Twitter, I think it was, like if it was a cool tone light or a warm tone light, it's very natural. So it's definitely not a cool tone. So I'd say it leans more warm. So hopefully if I get right under here, you can kind of see. See, it's not cool tone at all. Like I know the LED lights that are like too blue tone. Yeah, I don't like that at all either. Um, but yeah, this is very natural, but it's not too like yellowy. You know what I mean? I think it's like just perfect. Um, so yeah. There it is. I love it. It's so unique and I know that this is probably not going to come up on camera as well because I have it right by the window. If I had my desk and everything moved like on this other wall, I don't know. I may do that in the future. I'm not sure. Um, so we'll see. I'm still kind of playing around with this room. It also has three settings too. So, so you can dim it. So there's the dimmest and then so highest. So you got three settings on there. So anyway, there it is. Okay, we got lots more work to do in the house though, so let's keep going. I'm just gonna make this like a super long vlog, so hopefully you can hang in there. I forgot, I had this out because I was gonna swap this out on camera with you. Um, so that's my current phone case, and I was gonna swap it out for the skin. Um, I just got this, this is from Unique Fine their own line and then a case that goes over it so they do skins and cases um so i love the pink marble by the way i picked that out and i thought it was so pretty with the the pink marble and it kind of has the warm tone which reminded me of like rose gold like rose gold pink marble combo i'm gonna try to do this on camera with you and show you how i apply the skin i already did it on my macbook which um it, i didn't show you that yet okay let me grab that and i'll show you really quickly what it looks like Okay, so let me just show you what it looks like once it's applied. Okay, so that's that's what that color looks like, the blush, yeah, the blush marble. Did I call it pink marble? It's blush marble, but super pretty, huh? I love, I love the look of that. So anyway, I just wanted to show you that case, and that's what I was gonna be putting on my phone after I swap out my old case, which I actually love this case too, because uh, you can put, uh, you can make it custom with whatever writing you want. That was from Caseify. I think, it was, I think that was the name of the company. Um, but yeah, time to swap it out and try a new one. So then it's gonna match this, but I just wanna show you what that looks like. The blush, blush marble. I think it would look really pretty in like Instagram pictures, you know, very uh, Instagrammable. Oh yeah, I didn't show you guys the plant stand. Let me show you that. Cause um, that's the one that we painted out there. So that's the plant I have there. I've got my tea over there, tea and water and my little nest. That's usually what it looks like. I usually have, uh, I'm surrounded with throws and fluffy pillows and I just sort of nest myself there with my tea. Um, oh wait, no, that's not tea. What am I thinking? No, no, no. I made um, infused mint water. Yeah. So on my pink cup is from TJ Maxx. So that's the hairpin plant stand that I got. There's the Rhephus palm. And this is the Bakira aquatica. It's pretty easy to find uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, and super easy to care for. Very forgiving. Okay, so I want to show you guys the nightstand. Okay, so 
there it is. Um, oh, this rug was in my office for a while. I sort of been switching things around and um, I do need another rug for sure in there. So yeah, I just wanted to make this room a little bit more softer being that it's the bedroom. And this is the part that swings out there. And I like that it just had the unique storage, right? So you've got storage in each of these little parts and this swings both ways. And that is my Sega Toys Homestar Planetarium, which I love. That's kind of like my nightlight. I've showed you guys that before. I haven't done a whole lot of decorating in here. I've got some crystals on my shelf over there. I need to organize that shelf. And then on this wall, I have um, some astrophotography from Sean Parker. And then uh, my Dyson fan there, got that at Costco. So yeah, I have some arranging to do still in here and after I get my sort of corner in there like the shelf all organized and everything I can show you guys um, anything different that changes in here. My bed is uh, or you know, my mattress is from Lumen Leaf and it's it's kind of like Tempur-Pedic but it's way more affordable and we used to have a Tempur-Pedic out in Maui and I loved that thing. I really didn't want to let it go but I couldn't bring it with us when we were moving so I needed to find a bed that was very very similar. And that has been awesome. Um, so I love it. Oh, and all of our bedding is from Ikea. Um, so the comforter, the duvet cover set, um, pillowcases. The pillows I got at Home Goods, um, just like the rug. Rug is also from Home Goods. So I figured we would end this video with just kind of going over some of my crystal collection up here and this bookshelf, which I haven't actually mentioned this on YouTube, I don't think. I know that if you follow me on Twitter and Instagram, you will have already seen this because I posted pictures on there. But um, yeah, this is from the girls' estate sales shop, the same place where I got the acrylic and my sofa and I've gotten several things there. But yeah, that's where that came from. It's originally from um, Anthropology. So I try to buy used and do everything on a budget, which is why it takes me a long time to decorate because it's literally just one piece at a time that I'm, I'm moving into the house and it just takes me a really long time because I hold out for the, the affordable deals, right? So the wood is mango wood and then it's got kind of this rustic um, sort of finish to the, the frame which is metal and at first when I got this I thought maybe I would you know paint it or I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it uh, until I actually got it in here and then I was like you know I actually like the contrast of the dark with everything else being light you know so I just thought yeah I'll just leave it I'll leave it dark because I do like the that contrast and also once you paint it that's it you know um, there is one mark here someone had a, a plant pot up here before but that's okay, I don't mind it. In fact, I'll probably end up switching switching my plant bottle. I'll probably put that right over that spot. But I'm still arranging this and everything, so I haven't really done much to it yet. Um, and, you know, I've got, like, clothes sitting there that probably aren't going to stay there. And I'll probably end up having, I don't know, maybe my purse is down here or something. So, yeah, I just have some of my crystal collection up here. Some of my favorite little specimens up there. And an air plant. Um, that's uh, the uh, philodendron. Uh, my rose quartz, which this is actually a, a set of bookends. That's from an estate sale too. And I brought those back with me from Maui, the geode. Um, these, I actually, they're from Tucson though. I mean, I got them in Tucson, but they're from Morocco. And yeah, I've got like my, my internet modem down there. But up here, I've got some crystals, which actually I just got an order this morning for this one here. So I'm going to be packing that one up and shipping it out to my lovely customer. I've got a scolocyte. So up here I have kind of a mix. I've got a few items that are on my website, which my website is, it's almost all crystals. It's, well, it's supposed to be crystals and jewelry, but I've got a whole new uh, line of jewelry that I'm working on. So that's going to be slowly getting uploaded on there. I have the scolocyte specimen, which I really need to get a nice display for because it's super fragile, but it's really, it's really cool. And scolocyte's actually pretty, pretty pricey stuff, but I got that one for a good price. Um, I've had that one for a while too, a few years. I've got some higher end specimens of the quartz crystal. Like this is one of the higher end ones. Like all the points on here you can see are just they're perfect. They're absolutely gorgeous and super clear. So there's certain pieces that are higher end and then there's, um, I don't think I have any in here. Oh wait, there's, there we go. Okay, hopefully that's coming up now. But that one there, for example, is a B grade. So you can see there, there are crystal points on there, but it's just not, it's not even close to the, the A grade there. 
there's so many so many tiny like super fine crystals on that other piece this is a little more chunkier um, and this is one of the higher end pieces too i don't know if all those tiny fine crystals are going to come up but yeah it's a, another neat piece Something else that I always search for are double terminated crystals um, of all kinds. So it doesn't matter what type the, the stone is, but those double terminated ones are pretty rare in certain, uh, certain instances, you know, certain types of crystals. So there's certain pieces like that one. I thought was a really cool one, how it's just sort of crashing through, you know, other crystal growth around there. I've got some uh, pyrite. And let's see, that little cube, that's actually Michael's there, but I just have it in here for now. We've got some Dan Bright crystal, and hopefully if I hold it up against the white, you can see the color difference too, because sometimes when I photograph it for the website, it looks almost like it's white, but it actually is this super gorgeous pale uh, blush tone pink, and that's a big crystal there. I don't have that on the website, because that's kind of my, my own... Um, piece that I was collecting for myself originally. Sometimes I end up giving up a piece and, you know, posting it online, but yeah, some of these I just save because it's just something that I've searched for, for my collection. Here's another Dan Bright piece. It's got a whole bunch of crystals on it. So pretty. And then I've got some more Dan Bright up on displays here, which maybe I can get that to focus a little better. There we go. This one actually has a ton of like druzy crystals that grew on the top of it, on the point. And then we have some rosacite, which this is from Mexico. And I just thought this was super gorgeous stuff. I've got a bunch of this on the website, like all different shapes and sizes. And so it's got, um, it's got tiny, tiny crystals. It's kind of like encrusted with crystals. And along with that blue, and I love the tone of it. I mean, it's like earth and ocean, you know? Just super beautiful. That one, you got like some, I mean, look at the colors on that. Isn't that crazy with like the, this is all the matrix. The The stone is the, the blue and the crystals. But I think that combination of the matrix with those colors is just beautiful. There's another piece. You see that crystal growing out of there? So yeah, the rosacite, gorgeous stuff. Chrysoprase from Australia. Okay, and back here, I don't think I've showed you guys these yet. These are really rare to get a hold of. The rose quartz in its natural crystallization form. That's something that you you just, it's very hard to get a hold of. You almost never see it like out at the shows. There was only one booth of the thousands of booths that were all over Tucson. I only found one from Brazil that had the, wait, no, no. No, no, okay. I did find two. I found two booths with it, but I scoured all over the place looking for natural rose quartz crystals. So like this, for example, this is rose quartz. That's not a natural crystal. It was cut like that. Um, you know, it's very beautiful and I, I love this stuff too. It's usually in large chunks and they will uh, cut and shape out of it, right? So they'll cut and shape like spheres and bookends and things like that, but you're gonna normally see it like that. You know, or, or actually here, let me show you a better example. Let me show you on my shelf in here. So you're gonna see chunky rose quartz more like this. That's how you're normally gonna see it. And they'll have like big old bins of it, you know, and crates of it. And uh, it's not a rare stone rose quartz, but it is extremely rare in this formation where it's its natural crystals that have formed instead of like the chunky stones. So this one actually has some tourmaline on the underneath side there. See that? So that is a really cool specimen because, well, if I could hold it correctly so you could see. But yeah, that's, let's see, will you be able to see the crystals in there? The individual crystals? Let me show you this too. That one's another really pretty one. See, completely natural rose quartz druzy crystals. Michael picked this one out because it reminded him of bubble gum. <laughs> anyway, so that is the rose quartz. And I don't have any of these online because these are just my own personal uh, pieces here. But if I, if I come across more that are really good quality like these, um, I might be willing to 
give one up. <laughs> we'll see though. But yeah, so there's certain pieces that I'm just not willing to give up because I know how hard it is to find them and how, how much searching it takes. And online, I don't like purchasing crystals online from sources that I don't know. I will, well, first of all, for any crystals that I purchase, I buy direct. So I will only buy from, you know, the actual, the actual people or the family who is sourcing the crystals directly from the mine. And then here I have two double terminated Veracruz amethyst. Look at those. Like, look at the, the shape on that, the formation. And then this one, I just thought that one was super cool with the, the matrix, you know, it's natural stone and it just formed just like that, perched like that. Isn't it just amazing? I mean, what the earth can produce, it's just, Incredible. I mean crystals will always be something that like crystals and stones have always been something that fascinated me ever since I was a kid This is a Thunder Bay red amethyst here So you can see the color difference um, the red in this one. It actually it looks more pink But I love that. It's just really pretty. I love the color combination. It's got some matrix in there, too Okay, so that's spirit quartz Another really pretty one and this actually has a really neat formation because it has basically like hundreds of tiny or if not thousands of tiny crystals depending on the piece that you have uh all the way around so i mean like it has the main point and then the whole thing is all crystal i actually bought a ton of the spirit quartz all different shapes and sizes uh, and about i think i have about a quarter of it left because it sells super super fast i do have some spirit quartz on my other shelf too let me go see what's over there Okay, right up here is, oh yeah, you're able to see the color better on, on these pieces. See how pretty that lavender is? Look at all those crystals. So pretty. Yeah, Spirit Quartz is another favorite of mine. I've got some pieces of turquoise up there too. Got a, a bunch of stuff. Look at this little, uh, here's another Rose Quartz piece. Little egg. And a lot of my rose quartz that I collect is from Madagascar. It's the only uh, type of rose quartz that stars. So if you hold a light on it, it's gonna produce like a, a star effect inside. You know what, I just realized that this should probably be a separate video. Or maybe I can do another video because I have way, way more crystals than up what's up on my shelves here. Yeah, so if you wanna see more videos on crystals, I can definitely do another one and show you even more like what I have in my crystal closet. All right, I put everything back on the mantle. So I just have my selenite lamp, my moon art, um, which is on metal, and then my uh, my little Choya skeleton, which, oh, one of you guys asked me what exactly is this Choya? Because you probably hear me say just Choya skeleton or Choya. Um, it's cactus. So it's a type of cactus, the Choya. So that's the skeleton of the Choya cactus. Oh, I almost forgot I was gonna mention these. I wanted to thank Olivia because she is a viewer. She sent me this lovely little gift package of like homemade whipped body butter and sugar scrubs and um, this little cup and everything had like handwriting on it and these coasters. And I thought everything was just so sweet and cool. I actually filmed the unboxing to it and then I don't know what happened to the footage. I don't know if I accidentally deleted it or something. Anyway, so I'd already unpacked the box and everything, but I wanted to just say thank you to Olivia if she's watching. Um, she made these coasters all custom for us, Michael and Christine, and it's marble, and I love the, the wood and the white and the natural look. It's just super, super pretty. So I have been using those. Thank you so much for that. That was really sweet and totally unexpected. And I will put her Etsy link down below in the down bar in case you guys want to check her out. And also this here. This is um, some artwork that I'm going to be putting up somewhere sometime with you guys as soon as I find some frames for it. But let me show you what's in here. Star maps, yes, yes indeed. I ordered these on the night sky. Um, I went on there and you can just make them. I saw them on Twitter, which is how I first discovered them. And I was like, oh my gosh, those are so freaking cool. I have to go on there and make some. I love the idea of these for gifts or something. On their website, you can go on and you just type in a certain day. So if you have like a special day, like your your wedding or you know your child's birthday or something, um, you can put in the day and it's gonna bring up what the sky looked like in the Northern or Southern hemisphere, whichever one you choose. It's gonna show 
you what the stars were doing that particular time and then you can put a title. So this one I chose, um, well my title is Into the Outback and this was when Michael and I were traveling in Australia and we went to Chiligo and it was a particular night where we were camping, we were sleeping in our tiny little rental car and we were up in the night because I had to go pee or something and um, we were walking to the bathroom and there was all like the field that we were parked in, it was all full of wallabies and they were just like all standing there and it looked like they were watching the stars, it was the weirdest thing. And anyway, it was just like an unforgettable experience just standing out there in the field of wallabies and they're all just in, there's like a hundred of them or more. And then this one is the solar eclipse where Michael and I went to Glendo, Wyoming to watch the, the totality of the solar eclipse. They have different options where you can choose either to just have the stars or you can also have uh, the constellations kind of um, drawn out there too. So that's the option that I chose for both of those. And they have all different colors too, but I wanted just the matte black and it's such a pretty black too. It almost looks like velvet. Okay, so those are my star maps, Into the Outback and Solar Eclipse. All right, guys, I think that's everything. Um, I'm gonna let you go for now because I think this video is gonna be super long. And like I said, I will do um, a like a living room tour or front room tour, you know, where you can kind of see more detail of everything. And I, I guess I didn't really show you like what's on my shelf or anything back there. My little camel is up there, camel and pyramid. Oh, I don't know if you saw my Egypt book too, but that's another thing that I'm like having an obsession about is Egyptian stuff. Like I love Egypt and the pyramids and camels and anyway, so it's, yeah, that's another, another thing. Okay. I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you so much for watching and I love you. Have an awesome day and I will see you very soon in the next vlog or video. I've got a haul coming up too, Sephora VIB haul. So I'll see you guys. Love you. Bye.